Hey friends, if you started monitoring your sites and apps with Checkly and adopted the monitoring as code workflow, you probably came across the concept of environment variables. In Checkly, we have local and remote environment variables. If you wonder when to use which, this video is for you. So let's get to it. We are here in a Checkly project that already has installed everything we need to get rolling with Checkly. In the local package JSON, this project includes the Checkly CLI. And at the root of the project, we have the common configuration file, the Checkly config. The Checkly config is used to define project configuration, like project name, repository URL, but also default values for your API checks, for browser checks, or whatever you want to do with Checkly. When we have a look at the right side, there's a production check TS file. And this file uses the Checkly constructs to define email alert channels, browser checks, API checks. And when we have a look, here's an API check that monitors our own API and checks for a proper 200 status code running every 30 minutes. Here we have an email alert channel. And here we have a browser check that uses Playwright to visit checklyhq.com and test if everything is working properly. And when we have a look here at this email alert channel, you already see that this is using process.env. So this is accessing information or variables that are stored in my current environment. And if the email variable isn't defined, it is falling back to Stefan at checklyhq.com for this email alert channel. So what this now means is that I can go back and I can deploy all these Checkly constructs, so an API check, an alert channel, and a browser check, and I can define a local environment variable right here on my command line to override this email address that is defined in this email alert channel. So when we now run and deploy this, Checkly is building and parsing the project. And when I'm now deploying this, I can go to my Checkly account. Here we have the Stefan at Checkly HQ email address. But when I now do a refresh, I just updated my Checkly setup. So it's now sending emails to the raccoon at checklyhq.com email address. Local environment variables are accessible at build time. So whenever you run Checkly test, Checkly deploy, and the Checkly CLI is parsing and building your Checkly setup, you can access the variables that are available in your current environment. And this could be my computer over here. It could also be CI, CD, or you could even define local environment variables in the command that you're using right from the command line. But what are remote environment variables then? Let's find out by looking at this browser check. This browser check runs in the Checkly Cloud and it uses Playwright to do some end-to-end -end testing. And when we have a look at the defined test or spec file in block spec TS, there is not much magic going on here. We're evaluating a URL depending on process.env and this is a remote environment variable and we will see in a moment what that means. And if this one is not defined, it is using checklyhq.com. It's going to the page and then it's taking a screenshot. And you might now think that this would work to use your local environment variables, but unfortunately it does not because this code will run in the Checkly Cloud and the Checkly Cloud doesn't have access to your local environment. So when we run npx checkly test with the record flag to keep the results and with the verbose flag, we will see in just a second that this URL will still be www.checklyhq.com. Let's wait until this comes back. And here we have the logs. And indeed, we see that process.env screenshot URL was undefined because we are still using checklyhq.com. So how could you define environment variables that are accessible in the Checkly Cloud. When, we, when you go to Checkly, you can always navigate to the environment variables section. And here we see the global remote environment variables. Environment variables for your browser checks or a setup on TRM script or any script that runs in the Checkly Cloud can be defined on a global group and individual check level. And I could now go in here and I could define screenshot URL to override it for my particular browser check, but I don't think this is much fun. So let's head over to the terminal and first of all, play around with the Checkly CLI a little bit more. What you always can do is you can call help on the commands available. And here we see that there is an env command and we can list all the global environment variables using ls. So ideally, when we now run env ls with the Checkly CLI, we will see our super secure user password. So what we now can do is we could go in here and we could say Checkly env add screenshot URL, and we can override this remote environment variable by running this command. 
So when we now do a refresh here, we should have another global remote environment variable. Indeed, we do. And when we now run the command, here we have it. We can remove the parts that won't work. And when we now run this checkly test again, you will see that process.env screenshot URL is now defined because we set it in the checkly infrastructure. Here we go. And also because we used the record flag, we can now access the results of this check and we will see that this actually worked. So when we go to the block checks and we have a look at the screenshots, which is this one, here we see that the screenshot was now taken from the docs itself instead of checklyhq.com. But if you're now all in with monitoring this code and you adopted the Checkly CLI to test your future monitoring with your preview deployments to then transform your tests into monitors, you might ask, okay, but how can I override these remote environment variables? Luckily, the Checkly CLI has something for that too. When we go to the terminal and we look into the help of the checkly test command, you will find out that there's also an environment flag that allows you to override process.env screenshot URL in this case, which is a remote environment variable running in the checkly cloud. So when we go back here, we can say minus E and here we have our remote environment variable that we want to override. So I'm again passing the record flag and the verbose flag. So when we now look at the results, process.env screenshot URL will be google.com. And this is especially handy when you want to automate your monitoring as code workflow in CI CD. When we, for example, look at the docs for implementing monitoring as code in GitHub Actions, you will see that we do exactly the same thing here. We're calling npx checkly test with the dash E flag to dynamically hand in a preview deployment URL to then run the tests and check if these tests will be functional as monitors when you deploy to production and when you want to flip the switch to turn your tests to monitors. So when we talk about environment variables in Checkly, you always have to keep in mind that there are two different types of environment variables. They are local environment variables that are available at build time. So when you're calling npx checkly tests or when you're calling npx checkly deploy to control your constructs, like in this example here, to set a phone number or to control your API and browser checks. And then on the other hand, there are remote environment variables that are accessible at runtime. You can use these in your setup scripts, in your teardown scripts, in your browser checks, and they are available in the Checkly Cloud. You can control them via the CLI and you can set them on a global group and individual check level. And with this, you have two ways to make your entire monitoring as code setup configurable. And I hope this is all you need to be successful with monitoring as code. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I will also place some links there and I will talk to you very, very soon again for the next Checkly tip.